What's up, YouTube fam? So, I saw a video about immigrants going home. And I just wanted to share the video and get people's per perspective and take on what they think. Because I don't see this on the news much where Americans are saying how they feel about the immigration problems and process. Check this out. Security officers that are being paid as much as $24,000 a month. We have home health care workers that are being paid up to $17,000 a month. You don't think that Chicagoans could have benefited from that? We have citizens in this city that have been on the waiting list for affordable housing for years. And migrants have been bumped in front of them. We have people who have been given up to $9,000 a month for housing assistance. That amount of money can be life-changing for some families here in the city of Chicago. We are not anti-migrant. We do sympathize with them. But what I am is I am pro-black. I am for my people who have been mistreated, who have been marginalized, who have been disrespected. And it is disrespectful for people to expect us to give up our parks and our schools and places in our community for others. We're not saying that there's not room here, but what we are saying is that we're not going to step aside for you to accommodate them when you have continued to leave us out of the equation. So I'm not just talking to Brandon Johnson right now. I'm talking to Governor Pritzker, and I'm talking to President Biden. And I want you to understand that as we run into this upcoming political year, where the Democratic Party is on the menu, hear me. People of Chicago, of Illinois, and of the United States, it is time for us as black people to stop voting party. Come on. It is time for us to stop voting color. It is time for us to start voting our self-interest. And if the Democrats in the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois, and the country of USA refuses to listen to us, then it is time for us to start looking at other alternatives. People, we are looking at other alternatives. We will not step aside and continue to be mistreated. We will not continue to be disrespected. I'm looking at people who are coming here from another country given work visas, given social security cards. Nobody is asking them what walk of life that they come from. You don't think that our brothers who have been in prison, who have come out and who have changed their lives, were benefit for the same opportunities that we are giving these migrants? And I'm not saying that they don't deserve those opportunities, but what I am saying is we deserve them first. What I am saying is you can't continue to put us on the back burner and think that we're going to continue to be okay with it. We've done that for long enough. And what we're saying here today is that it's no longer acceptable. We're saying to our city, we're saying to our, our governor that you're not going to continue to set monies aside for people who don't live here and disrespect, mistreat, and, and forget about us. You've forgotten about us. You have treated us as if we don't matter. And we're saying to you, you're not going to continue to do this. We're saying to you to see us. You're dumping people into our communities who are going to in some way move us out of the way. And when I say to you, if you want a glimpse into what's going to happen, look at how people of color are being treated in Venezuela right now. We seem to forget that Venezuela was one of the first places that had African slaves that they were taken to. We're forgetting about that. And so we're forgetting that there are blacks in Venezuela who are being treated the same way we are. And so for us to expect that they're going to come here and be put into our society and treat us differently is a pipe dream. Home now. There's no space.
A disturbing analysis on homelessness in the U.S. coming from the Wall Street Journal. After reviewing data from around the country, the journal says that there has been a record increase in the unhoused population this year. The article says the homeless figures are up roughly 11% from last year. That's the biggest rec recorded increase since the government began tracking those numbers in 2007. It says the surge reflects the basic unaffordability of housing across the U.S., a lack of affordable rental. People here are suffering. Well, one woman who is facing a cold night on the streets is a person who has dedicated her life to helping the homeless. I got a chance to hear her story of how she's continuing to help the community while facing her own uncertain future. I'm going to show you what we're, we're serving today, Sharon Alexander spent Christmas Eve feeding the homeless in West Oakland. But now, a reality she never imagined would happen to her. She's now homeless herself, evicted end of the month, because the city deemed her housing substandard and tenants must leave. Did you ever think this would be your reality? No, no. Um... Ooh. She's helped run Arthur Jean Safe Place, a nonprofit that provides food and emergency shelter to community members. We were just, you know, continuing to Arthur Jean Safe Place, and then this happened, and my whole world is falling, it fell apart. But I'm not giving up, though. You know, I got to continue one, one step at a time. Here she is giving out meals from the back of her car and handing out warm clothes. We have cornbread, we have mac and cheese. Uh, we also have blankets, and we have hats and gloves, because they're much needed right now. It's very cold outside. Little did she know, weeks later, she'd be in a similar predicament, living out of her car. Just going through the day-to-day, -day, not knowing where you're going to eat, not knowing how, where you're going to sleep, sometimes having to sleep outside. Organizations that help, they only open for a certain amount of time. At night, you're on your own. But she vows to continue serving others. Even when she's going through what she needs to go through, she's always helping someone else. Is it still hard to keep doing the good work you're doing, given your situation? People depend on us. And we've been doing it so long that, you know, they appreciate that. And they, some of them really need it. Our country is doing a lot for other countries. You know, I mean, of course, this is a melting pot. America's in a, a melting pot. And immigrants are always welcome here in America. But the reality is... Take care of Americans first. I mean, you see on this channel, homelessness, drug abuse, uh, mental illness. I mean, we have uh, the poverty level is ridiculous here in America. Meanwhile, we're sending money over to this country for this, to that country for that. And you know what I'm talking about. And we got all these immigrants coming here and they're getting first dibs on things where there's people here who are looking for apartments. I mean, and cannot find an apartment who are homeless right here in America. Did you hear all those amounts she said that is getting spent? on the immigration and the immigrants. It's just ridiculous. You could never go to another country and we get that kind of support. Imagine me going to a foreign country and saying, okay, I need this, I need that. And I know they're in a different type of situation. But no, you can't go any other country and get the kind of care. And we're one of the smallest countries. Like we're a little tiny country giving away to everybody else. I mean, we have to get it together, you know, and take care of home first. I think that's the key. Take care of home first. Please leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this whole immigration thing, about the immigrants coming here, about all the money that's being put into immigration. Um, if you think they should go home or if you think they should stay, um, what do you think is the resolution for this problem? Thanks for watching. Have a great day.